Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hello everyone, Andrew the Astronaut here, and today we'll be building the cancelled X-20 Dinosaur space plane. You can see me currently constructing it now. The Dinosaur program were three separate military and reconnaissance projects all merged into one. Its development would soon help the X-15, the X-40, the X-37 prototypes, as well as the space shuttle. The dinosaur was designed to be a manned reusable hypersonic glider. Hence, why in the finished spacecraft, it is devoid of engines besides RCS thrusters. There were three versions of the X-20 dinosaur. The first was the Titan I ICBM launching it into a suborbital trajectory. The second would be a Titan II, which would also send it farther, but still a suborbital trajectory. The Titan III C, with its massive 1204 and 1205 boosters, will be used to lift it into orbit. But in 1963, the program was cancelled. So you can see me currently constructing the dinosaur spacecraft, and it was a pretty awkward shape considering that the Mark III parts are the only ones that have a flat bottom. Of course, the Mark III parts are way oversized for this build, unless you have a mod like tweak scale to shrink it down. So I decided to use structural plates since this doesn't need any fuel besides monopropellant, which we could just clip into that box that we have because there's nothing in there. You can currently see me constructing the wings and it was a kind of awkward shape as well. It's also kind of merged with the nose cone, which was strange. And here are the wheels. Now these, I don't know, but for some reason, they have a stupidly high impact tolerance. They're just so strong for some reason. Even those small ones. In another flight, we crashed in at like 30 meters per second, and they survived. So yeah, we're building the Chitin launch vehicle right here. And of course we have to add the K because, well, this is Kerbal. This is the smaller Chitin 2. And then after two suborbital hops, we'll grab some big boosters and send it into orbit. Now, because the space plane has wings, I'm adding these massive fins over here. And that's because we need the center of mass to be behind the center of lift so that it is stable. Now, I end up adding another pair on the second stage because it is so... The center of lift with that second stage is just so close to the center of mass. So, I had to add a second pair of fins. Unrealistic, but functional. And we also deorbited the Aurora spacecraft from last video. And I'm just darkening up the parts, adding some decals. And, you know, generally the stuff that you would do to make it look black. Now, you can't recolor cockpits and wings and such in KSP, so I just went with making the body like that. So now this is going to be a abort slash landing test to see if we could abort the mission safely. And we can see here that... It went pretty smooth. We're just going to decouple. And it flips out of control, We and we decouple it. And yes, despite me, the instabilities of the craft when the second stage was on board, we can now press on. We can do a smooth landing and transition back. So now we're building... Well, never mind. I mean, we were actually going to do a second suborbital flight. And this time... I suspected this was going to be the Mercury Redstone, basically, for the dinosaur. We have that amazing cinematic shot. Could have used it for the thumbnail, but I ended up changing the design, so we'll have a separate thumbnail. And this second flight was when I realized that we should add more wings on the second stage to make it more stable. I accidentally wrote wigs on my script here, but that's not the problem. 
Anyway, the second stage, now this is the th third flight, I believe, or was this the second flight? But it has the wings on it, meaning that this, yeah, this was the second flight, which is not the, this is the third flight, which is not the final flight. I did add the 1204 and 1205 boosters on it, but I cut them out just because it was very long and cumbersome. But we'll, you'll see them again on the final flight. So I was trying to guide ourselves back to the KSC or the island runway, but this thing just, it just, it has a glide profile of a brick. I know this was made to be a hypersonic plane, so when it, it flies really good in the hypersonic regime, but in the subsonic regime, it flies like a brick in a windstorm. So, we're going to have to see if we can get near the island runway. No, we're going to have to slow down a bit more just so that we don't crash and die. Um, but we end up pretty far away, so I decided, okay, we're going to have to do a ocean splashdown. Now, I was a, kind of afraid that it might destroy the craft, but in the end, we survived. Just the nose cone and landing legs broke. And now this is where we add those boosters. We add the skipper engines and two massive liquid fuel boosters and now for some reason even though i detached these attached these on a decoupler the engines were taking fuel from the main core so we had to decouple the main core once those boosters were also out of burning so yeah little inefficient um i will put a updated craft file in the description on kerbal x this does have super super tight delta v margins this could not have been closer in fact, I actually end up having to use the RCS fuel, like half of it, so that I can get that thing into orbit. Now, this is the second stage burning. I know that the second stage would have remained attached when it was doing an orbital insertion and when it was done, but I had to decouple it because we don't want to leave any space junk and because it would just be extra weight for our RCS fuel to carry. And RCS engines, if you haven't noticed, are very weak in Kerbal Space Program. And in real life, they're even more weak. And now we're just going to try and circularize. I was feeling like we might have to do a fifth flight, but no, this actually had enough RCS fuel to insert itself barely into an orbit with a periapsis of 95 kilometers. Just to play it safe. I really, if you're gonna fly this craft, you really have to pay attention to how it is being flown because, or else you're gonna run out of monoprop and you know. And now we are deorbiting this. Actually, we're still doing our orbital insertion. Uh, and now that we're in orbit, we can just let Valentina take a few orbits, take a nice thumbnail shot, <laughs> and we can press on now to the deorbit. I think Valentina might want to come back. I mean, we just launched her right after she was on a second orbital mission. And we're going to lower the periapsis down. I was trying to do, put it as close to the edge of the darkness as possible. I didn't really want to land in the dark, but alas, our periapsis, well, it lowers in the dark, basically. So we're going to just point this forward and this is kind of like a standard space shuttle re-entry i think yeah it it looks like a space shuttle re-entering because it's we're at around a 40 degree angle and the flames are getting very hot i don't know how those structural plates survived but somehow they did and yeah that actually looks really cool really really cool so now we're going to use the monoprop to slow ourselves down and speed ourselves up. I wanted to get to land. Uh, I was suspecting I was going to land in the ocean, but the darkness revealed and the lights from the landing gear revealed that I was landing on land at the very last minute. So we're doing some maneuvers to slow us down. Uh, I learned this from N9 Gaming in his For All Kerbal Kind of Realism overall video. And you just pitch down, up, and down, and up again. And then just turn one way and then turn another way to slow your speed down. And this was probably the craziest landing possible. Um, we hit the ground, we flipped over, 
Then the elevons broke, but we landed back safely. And, uh, I'll let the footage explain what's going on, but... Still, this was a very fun craft to fly, and... Really hope... Really hoped it to be completed, but alas, it never was completed. So, but... There is a Kerbal version, which you can download in the description on Kerbal X, and remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell, so that, you know, so that you're notified when I release these videos. We hit 25 subscribers recently, and I'm very happy about that. So now here comes that landing I was talking about. Um, yeah, it turns out I was much lower from the ground than the indicator shows. I switched it literally at the last minute. Seeing that we were only like a hundred meters above the ground, and boom, we smashed, and well, it worked. And besides, thanks everyone for watching, and this is Andrew the Astronaut, signing off.